Hi, it's Kate here from Minor Conflict, and this is Quick Tips. Today we're talking power swords. Let's get into it. All right, so first off, I'm a little hungover this morning. This morning, it's like two o'clock. Um, so sorry if I'm not as pretty as usual, um, if my hands get a little bit shaky, but I've had some French toast, and I've got my coffee, and I've been listening to a bit of Nick Cave, which puts me generally in quite a good mood. So hopefully, we can get through this in one piece. So today we're gonna to be working on a power sword, but the same concept can go for pretty much any power weapon you want. We're gonna be working on this little sergeant's power sword here, which is actually a bit of an older one. I think it's from the Devastator kit. Uh, but that's important to note because it actually has three surfaces, whereas generally most power swords have two. So we're going to have to think a little bit more carefully about where we put what colours. Usually when we're only dealing with two surfaces, it's easy enough to switch the blend from one side to the other. So usually we'd have the darker area here and the lighter parts here, and then the other side we'd just reverse it. So when it comes to having three, we're going to pretty much do the same thing, but we're going to make a darker area in the middle of the centre surface here. This is because we want to maximize the contrast at the sharpest point, that being right here at the tip. So that's where we're going to want that dark, dark blue to butt up right against that lighter, almost kind of white blue. Speaking of blues, these are the colors that we're going to be using today, uh, but you can really switch these out for anything as long as you have a dark tone, a mid tone, and a light tone, as well as a, a couple of whites that you can kind of play around with. Now before we get started, as usual, I'm not a pro painter and this is not me sitting here trying to show you how great I am. If you're sitting at home and thinking, man, I could do that, well good, because you could. The idea with these wee videos is for people like you and me who have jobs and kids and other responsibilities, we can still have pretty good looking armies that are level that is attainable and achievable and most important, relatively quick. So to start off with, we're just gonna go over with our mid-tone. For me, that means so take green, and we're just gonna fill in the whole thing. Usually you'd wanna do this before you do any of the other little detail work, like the, the handle and the hilt that I painted here. So you don't have to worry too much about uh, being super careful. But if your model's already painted or you're touching up a power sword that you've already done, you can just muck this up and go over it one more time. So once we've got that first thin coat down, we're going to give it a second to dry and then just go over it one more time to make sure we have a nice smooth surface. It's really important that we get a smooth kind of non-textured finish on this first coat so that the rest of the colours will blend seamlessly. Alright, so from there we're going to a first layer of wet blending. For this we're going to use uh, your dark tone, for me that's McCrag Blue. We're just going to thin it down with a bunch of water or something like Lamia Medium if you have any of that around. And we're just going to slowly build this up in layers. You can see here as I put it on my thumb it's kind of opaque and this will dry like super quickly, like within 10 seconds. That's how you know you've got the perfect consistency. So we're going to start halfway down the sword and just pull it right up to the top. We want to do one big long stroke. That's because the pigment's going to collect at the end of that stroke. So if you do lots of little brush strokes, it's just going to be really patchy. You want big, long, smooth motions. Now for the bottom surface, we're going to go the opposite way. So instead of going towards the tip, we're going to flip it around and go from about halfway down towards the hilt. Again, one long stroke, making sure that that pigment's getting stronger as we get to the end. And then for the middle here, we're going to do the same thing, but instead we're going to push it towards the center of the surface and then from the top back so that we've got this middle part that's going to have the most amount of pigment. And then we're just going to switch to the other side and do the exact same thing, uh, but in the opposite. So before when we did the top surface, we had our dark area going towards the tip. So this time we're going to make sure that our dark area is going towards the hilt. And then for the bottom one, we're going to flip it around again and go from about halfway down to the tip. And this means we're going to have lots of contrast where these lighter colors and darker colors meet, which is just really going to sell the effect. And then with that flat surface, again, we're going to go from either end towards the center just to pull that pigment in the middle. And that's it. That's, that's basically how you do this. Um, we're just going to do this a couple of more times. Like literally by the time I put that down, that's already dried and I can switch back over to the other side. So I'm just going to repeat it probably about three times uh, for each shade we're doing. Again, making sure we're doing those long, complete strokes so that the pigment's building up in one area. And each time we do it, we're going to start a little bit further down the blade. Not a lot, just a little bit, just to help sell that kind of fade. I'm actually just gonna let this roll and not speed it up so you guys can see how quickly this actually happens. I always thought this technique was really time consuming and difficult to do, but once you've actually given it a go, you'll find it's super easy and you can get the whole thing done in like 10, 15 minutes, which I think when you're just doing like the odd sergeant or captain or veteran or something, um, it's super worth it because it does make him stand out and make those power swords just look fucking dope.
And again, testing on our thumb to make sure the consistency is right and also to make sure we're not overloading our brush. You're not getting too much on at once. Generally about three coats will do you pretty well and we're just repeating that process and building those layers up. So from here, we're gonna go straight into our lighter tone, which for me is Lothurn Blue. And we're gonna do the exact opposite before. So for the top before, I was going towards the hilt, now I'm going towards the tip. And for the bottom, I was going towards the tip, so now I'm gonna to go towards the hilt. And again, this is just building up that contrast. And really, it's the same process, but just a different direction. You can see here, I'm going from that darker area to that lighter area. Just brushing it off if you end up making a wee, a wee muck up there. Um, and then again from the center to the tip just to reinforce that that darker area is going to be darker and the lighter area is going to be lighter. This, this is all pretty self-explanatory, you probably don't need to have me go on about this. Now you can see here it's not actually looking that great and it's because the dark tone and the light tone are kind of too far apart. So what I'm going to do is just go back to our mid-tone, which was that Sotec green that we put on in the beginning, and just help these colours kind of get themselves blended together. So I'm just going back over like I did with the dark tone, starting in the lighter blue areas, and then pulling that Sotec green into the darker areas. And again, two or three coats of this, doing the same process that we've already done, and that blend should be looking a lot better. I think this is actually a pretty good point in general. Often the difference between a really good looking army and one that's just kind of okay isn't like the skill level of the painter or getting everything perfectly right every time, first time, but just not being stubborn, I guess, and not trying to bull your way through it. You know, not just putting the paint on and then thinking you're stuck with it and going, yo, fuck yeah, mate, she'll be right. But actually spending the extra two minutes and going back over and tidying things up as you go. And so once I've tidied that bit up, I might even go back with a little bit more of that McCrag blue just to build up some of those darker tones again. Just revisions and revisions and revisions. The more you do on this, the better it's going to look, uh, but don't feel like you have to spend as much time here as I have. You do also want to make sure that you're only painting that one surface, so say here, that one top part of the blade. If you get it onto the middle part or the bottom part, it really is going to start breaking that effect. You want to try and keep each surface as distinct and separate as you can. From here I'm going to start making an even lighter tone by getting some Ultimate Grey on my palette and start pulling some of that lighter tone of the Lothurn Blue into it till we get kind of halfway between Ultimate and Lothurn and then add a bit of water to turn it back into a glaze and we're going to start applying this to the very very brightest areas of the blade. Again testing to make sure it's not too thick and that it's running properly and then just along the very tip you can see I'm almost starting like a quarter of way at the blade this time and just building up those lighter layers again. I know I'm speeding this up, but as you saw from that very first one, this doesn't take very long at all. By the time you're done one side, the other side's pretty much dry and you can just switch straight back. And again, I'm not super stoked with that blend, so I might even work a little bit of Sotec Green back into it. I really like Sotec Green because it's, it's blue, but it does kind of have that turquoisey tint, which plays off the darker blue and the lighter blue really well. It's a really good color. I'm a, I'm a big fan. So I always recommend if you're doing something like this to grab a bit of Sotec Green and just chuck it in the middle there. And again, we're just building back into those lighter tones to add a bit more softness and just make sure that those blends are going to be nice and smooth. So from there we're going to move on to our next layer which is just going to be watered down straight Ulf one grey. Again just building up towards the tip there, being as smooth and careful as we can. Nice long strokes. And again we'll do about three coats of this guy. The more you do, the smoother these blends become. As you progress, those first layers aren't going to look that good, but as you start to get to the end, you're going to start noticing that really nice kind of transition from one colour through to the next. So then I'm going to hop straight into a bit of my old white scar. And the reason we went off one grey first is because you kind of have to think of like white scar as being 100% white. So if you go straight to 100%, there's nowhere for your highlights to go, right? So if you try and put a white highlight on top of white paint, it's just going to be the same white. So if we build up from Ulf 1 Grey, which is, I don't know, maybe say 70% white, it actually gives you a little bit more room to kind of maneuver. Now with that in mind, I'm only really going to do two really thin glazes with a white scar, because again, I want to make sure that I don't go to 100% white, because if I try and put any highlights on top of that, it's just going to be white on white, and you're not even going to be able to see it. So from here, I'm going to go back and add some more darker colors in, but this time I'm going to be really careful not to hit any of the edges. You can see here, I'm just kind of like, I'm almost creating a highlight by painting the negative space around the highlight, if that makes sense. I'm kind of avoiding the very edges where, you know, your highlight would be. And that's because we're kind of making a highlight by 
painting around the highlight and this is just going to help define those edges uh, and make everything look really sharp and tasty and also save us a bit of grief with the highlighting later on. And then we're just going to do the same thing again with a bit of Sotec Green. It just really helps kind of define the edges of these panels. All right, and from there I'm going to get onto our last color, a little bit more Ultron Gray here, and I've moved on to my like super, super detail brush, and that's because we're going to start doing some highlights. We're not necessarily going to highlight any of those darker areas, we're wanting to help build up those brighter areas, again to like bump up that contrast where the darker areas meet the lighter areas. And you can tell here we're really focusing on the areas where the lighter color already is, because we did that negative fill that created a nice kind of definition between the surfaces. We only really need to highlight these lighter, whiter areas. I'm also adding a few little nicks and scrapes and cuts in the blade here too, so it looks like it's been pretty well used, chopping down some filthy hair it is. And then finally we're going to crack onto a bit of white scar and I'm just going to put a little dot on each of these little power beads just so they kind of stand out and look like they're emitting some kind of glow. And then we're just going to go along and add some tiny little spot highlights. So here where that blade hits at a 90 degree angle that would be pretty sharp. Here where this wee nick is and here right at the tip where the cutting blade is. You can imagine those bits being really really sharp so that's where we want to make sure that our whitest whitest white is going to be. And then back over to the other side, same thing again, right at the tip there where the cutting blade is. And again where that white butts up against the dark blue. And from there the last thing we're going to do is just a little bit of Drakenhof Nightshade or whatever colour shade matches the paint that you're doing. And we're just going to paint around the hilt there to fill in some of those negative areas and then back up along where this power bead kind of goes up and charges the sword. So from here we just need to tidy up some of those details on the hilt, like the skull and the power source, and we'll have a pretty good looking power sword. So here's our nice wee sword boy, we've got some glazing, we've got some transitions going on, and all like within 10 minutes. I do urge you to give this a go if it's something you've been thinking about. It's not terribly complicated and it can come out looking really spick. If you are a bit worried about it, you can start off with a little knife boy like this before moving on to your sergeant or that captain that you're really, really wanting to make sure comes out perfect. As always, keep an eye on the channel. We have more videos coming up every week. Uh, there's a podcast that's available here and also everywhere that podcasts are available. But until next time, thanks again for joining us and we'll see you soon. Get into it. Minor conflict.